if you think that mass is a really simple quantity, then after watching this video, you certainly won't think so. For the simple reason that, to some extent, we are encountering yet another, well, let's say, not so easily explainable physical phenomenon. As always, this is Yuri Trifonov, and we will try to understand what mass is from a physical point of view. Well, probably if you mentally go over all this, recall definitions from somewhere in the introductory physics course, you'll remember that mass is related to density. You'll recall that all this is tied to volume, and it would seem that everything is very simple. If you uh, rephrase and digest all of this, it turns out that mass uh, is, well, how to put it, a certain amount of matter, a certain scalar physical quantity, a quantity that has no direction, which determines the amount of matter. And it would seem one could stop there. By the way, mass plus uh, is often confused with density here, not understanding that density actually is mass distributed over volume, which follows from the dimensionality of density as illustrated by how density is depicted when matter is distributed over a certain cubic volume. And here's the most important part. We need to try to understand what mass actually is. The very definition we just mentioned that understanding is good for qualitative assessment. But when it comes to theoretical physics, when it comes to a deep understanding of all physical processes, it is very um, important, very necessary to figure out what uh, forms this mass. Of course, one could say that mass is formed by the mass of smaller particles that make up the object or body we are measuring or studying, but all of this is, by and large, a play on words. And sooner or later, we will come to the point where a singular object, the object to which we have reduced matter and made it, roughly speaking, the smallest, must also have mass that came from somewhere. So probably there is something much more interesting in mass than just a certain amount of matter that somehow acquired such a characteristic. In fact, for classical mechanics, mass is a measure of a body's inertia. The measure of a body's inertia is a specific characteristic related to inertia, which essentially describes how long a body can maintain its uniform motion without the application of external forces and, roughly speaking, moved by inertia. This is a brief and cursory mention of Newton's first law. In reality, it should have been explained in more depth, but that's not the point. Let's remember the most important thing from this. Mass is the measure of a body's inertia. All right, if mass is the measure of a body's inertia, then how could we try to relate this mass, for example, to gravity or to some other fields that exist? And let's remember the keyword here, field. And here we remember this magnificent expression that E equals mc2. Uh, if you take this formulation literally, if you delve into this formulation, as they say, head first, it turns out that mass is equivalent to energy and energy is equivalent to mass. In other words, mass determines how much energy is contained in a body, and vice versa. We uh, can say that the standard model of particle description, which has now formed, should have only worked in the early stages of the universe's development if particles had no mass. But um, looking from the perspective of what we have now, it's very strange. It turns out that objects that do have mass and it was necessary to come up with some auxiliary mechanism, as programmers say, a sort of workaround that would allow particles in the early universe to have no mass. And then somehow, all particles suddenly acquired mass. And this workaround, to some extent, was uh, the Higgs field. Initially, it was assumed that the Higgs field existed but did not interact with matter. And then, at some point in time, it literally turned on. This is exactly the kind of mechanism physics needed to somehow explain. The workings of the very standard model with which today everything is described, with which we actually build further theories today. When I uh, use the word crutch, it doesn't mean that I am criticizing or uh, considering this theory fundamentally wrong or somehow opposing it. And if classical physics stated that mass simply exists and that's it, if Newton and all the physicists of that time just noted that mass exists as some physical material unit, then with the help of the Higgs mechanism, we had a chance to try to explain everything that is happening. So what is this interesting Higgs mechanism? We remember from other videos on the channel that in fact all matter is constantly moving. So any mass is also constantly moving in space, but there's nothing surprising here. In fact, we are not sitting still right now. 
we are constantly moving at great speed. And with all this, when we move, when any object, any particle, or anything moves, well, it interacts with the Higgs field. What is the Higgs field? In fact, I couldn't find a complete answer. And I couldn't even find a somewhat simple answer. The logic is simple. There's a simple thought. Physical experiment. If you want, you can repeat it. Pour any liquid on the surface of a table, take some styrofoam balls, scatter these styrofoam balls on the dry table, scatter them next to the spot where you spilled something, then blow on these balloons, and in one case the balloons will easily scatter, while in the other case the balloons will get stuck in the liquid. This analogy is often used as an example of the interaction of matter with the Higgs field. In other words, mass is the characteristic that determines how strongly matter is tied when moving through the Higgs field. But doesn't it seem to you that such a definition is too simple, and doesn't it seem to you that this is too primitive a logic? Personally, it seems to me, so I tried to delve deeper into this issue, and now we will try to find something even more interesting in this matter. In general, if you are even slightly familiar with condensed matter physics, then you most likely know that there is such a thing as effective mass. Effective mass, in general, based on the logic and meaning embedded in it, somewhat resembles the principle of mass formation by the Higgs mechanism. In fact, effective mass indicates that the term effective mass indicates that the mass measured in a free state differs from the mass of a particle moving inside some object. This happens for the simple reason that mass is a characteristic of how an object interacts with its environment. And uh, the mass that we have inside some kind of Conductor, for example, differs from the mass that this particle has in a free state. I've covered a lot, but I hope it's clear that, in general, the environment affects how mass is perceived. This is the effective mass, according to the standard representation. And actually, I searched for a long time here for a detailed description of what happens when the Higgs mechanism operates and when a massive particle passes through the Higgs field indeed becomes massive after interacting with the Higgs field, and I couldn't find a detailed description. To be precise, there are articles on this topic, but they are quite complex to understand, including for me. Unfortunately, a more detailed mechanism. I couldn't find it, but if you know about it, please share it in the comments, as it would be interesting for me to learn. And I think it would be very useful for all the esteemed viewers as well. The description of the mechanism we are currently discussing boils down to whether the particle it sticks like styrofoam balls and cannot fly further, or an example, is given about the passage of light through some medium. After all, light travels through a vacuum without any obstacles, and at the maximum speed that is typically possible uh, in this universe. But when light passes, for example, through glass, it changes its speed. 